So, you want to become an airline pilot? That's actually one of my biggest dreams, but unfortunately, due to the pandemic, I haven't been able to fulfill it. By this time, I was actually supposed to be flying an ATR, but that didn't happen, but it's okay. Times like this are a great opportunity to grow in other areas. Maybe if the pandemic didn't happen, maybe I would have not made this video. So we always have to see the bright side of of everything. Anyways, I truly wanted to make this video for all of you out there that are also trying to become airline pilots. Just a little background story on me if you're new to my channel. Well, I'm originally from Spain and I moved to the United States to pursue my dream of becoming an airline pilot. And I am currently a CFI and I have almost 1500 hours, which is the minimum requirement to get my ATP. So in today's video, I'm going to cover what path can you take to get from where you are right now to becoming a pilot for the airlines, what my recommendations are, and at the end of everything, I'm going to kind of break down what the cost is going to be depending what path you decide to take. Also, before I dive into things, I just wanna mention that on the strip below, I added some timestamps. So that way, if you just wanna go straight to a subject that you're interested in, you can skip the video to those areas. And if you're interested in subjects that are related to aviation, finance, or marketing, please consider subscribing. All right, so let's get right into it. The main thing you need to decide is whether you wanna do this the civilian way or the military. I actually consider both. And I personally chose to go the civilian way. And this video is going to be mainly, mainly focused on how you can get where you wanna be at the civilian way. If you guys want me to do another video that goes more in depth on how you can get your airline transport pilot's license through the military, please comment below and I'll work on that video. The benefit though of going the military route is that the hours that you need to be able to get that license, the ATP, Airline Transport Pilot's License, significantly drop. You only need 750 versus me, which I need double that, which is like I need 100 and, uh, 1,500 hours. Also, you don't have to invest a bunch of money out of pocket because the military will pay for your training, so that's a great benefit. And not to mention that you will be serving one of the greatest countries on earth. Now, that being said though, in the military, in order for you to fly uh, airplanes for them, you, are, you do need to become an officer. And in order for you to become an officer, you do need a four year college degree and other requirements as well. Now, for all of you that wanna go the civilian way, another important decision you have to make is whether you want to go to college or you don't wanna to go to college. Back in the day, uh, airlines used to require you to have a college degree to get hired, but nowadays you don't need a college degree. So let's talk a little bit about the benefits of going the college route. One big advantage is that if you take an FAA approved college course, the hours required to get your airline transport pilot's license drop from 1,500 hours to 1,000 hours. If you take a two-year college degree, it drops it to 1,250 hours. That's the main advantage. Let's talk about the disadvantages. One, it's going to cost you so much more money. And the second thing is, in my opinion, from what I see talking to recruiters, talking to uh, HR people in the airlines, at the end of the day, what's going to make you get the job is your personality. If you have a shit personality and you have a um, college degree from Embry-Riddle, which is one of the most prestigious colleges for aviation, and you have that shitty personality, it's game over. They're not gonna take you. And nowadays you can gain as, this again, this is my opinion, it doesn't mean is true or you guys might have a different opinion, but for me, you can gain as much knowledge just by going in the internet. Everything is out there. You don't need to spend $200,000 going to college. But hey, if that's what you wanna do, you wanna go to college, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm pretty sure you're going to learn some very awesome things and you might meet a lot of great people that in turn could potentially land you a job in the future. But if you decide not to go to college, well, the process of getting all the licenses that you need is going to be pretty similar 
to the way that you would get it in college. And usually flight schools are divided into types and that is going to be part 61 training and part 141 training. Usually most colleges are going to go the part 141 way which is a more structured training but they sometimes also um, offer part 61 or you can go to a local flight school that is around the college that may have like a partnership with them and you could take also part 61. The main difference between both is that 61 is more flexible they work around your schedule and part 141 is more structured and you have to be in class and also usually you get your licenses a lot faster when you would do 141. So whether you go 61 or 141 the first license that you're going to need to get is going to be your private pilot's certificate. I actually uploaded a video that explains how to get your private pilot's license and it should be somewhere around here and you can click on that if you want to learn how to get that license. After you earn your private pilot certificate, it's time for you to get your instrument rating. The instrument rating is going to allow you to be able to fly in instrument conditions, which means in weather conditions that you can't really see anything outside the windshield. So you're going to be learning how to fly this airplane using the instruments of the aircraft. After that, the next license that you need to get is going to be your commercial license. And this license is going to allow you to be able to work for compensation or higher. Once you get to this point, which is your commercial license, you should have anywhere between 250 to 300 hours. And now will be the time to decide how you're going to build that time. And there's two ways you can do this. One would be becoming a certified flight instructor, which is what I did. The other way would be to work for a 135. So that would require to get your multi-engine instrument rating. The reason why I went the CFI route is because usually multi-engine training is a little bit pricey. It ranges anywhere between 6,000 to 13,000. I actually paid 13,000 because I did it in a, in a pretty nice twin. So I wanted to get my flight instructor certificate, start doing what I loved, and then with the money that I made as a CFI, we'll invest some of that money to get my multi-engine uh, rating. Now, if you don't think that you're good teaching people or you just don't feel comfortable, then the right thing to do would be to get your multi-engine rating and build your time to about 500 hours. That's usually what um, part 135 operators, which means charter companies require you to be able to fly for them. On that time between 250 to 300 hours, you can pretty much do other jobs like maybe towing banners, do sightseeing tours. There's a bunch of different things that you can do to get to that point. But in my opinion, the, your goal should be to be able to fly for a 135 operator because that's going to build your multi-engine time, which is super valuable in the marketplace. I truly love the CFI route because I've been able to really build a very nice relation with all my students and it just never feels like I go to work. But I also enjoy teaching, so it actually worked out for me. And currently I have uh, 1,460 hours and I need 40 more to have my ATP requirement. So hopefully when all this kind of clears up with a pandemic situation, I'm going to go to the airlines. Now, just so you have an idea, it took me about a year and a half to get from that 250, no, actually 300 hours to where I am right now. But that's because I was working with two flight schools. And in the beginning, there was uh, a time that I was flying like six hours a day. By the way, the maximum is eight hours. And I was able to rack those hours pretty fast. And what I would recommend to you if you decide to go the CFI way, is that you find flight schools that hire you as an independent contractor because it gives you a lot of flexibility on doing your schedule and being able to work with other flight schools. Because what happens is if you become the employee of a flight school, some of them may have you sign a non-compete agreement which limits you to just flying with them. So if they don't have students, you might be stuck with them and you're just not racking hours and I actually have seen that. The last thing I want to talk about is going to be cost. I took the civilian way, then decided not to go to college and I did part 61 training. It cost me about $35,000 to get to where I am currently at. If you go the civilian way, 
you don't go to college, but you take a part 141 program, which is an accelerated program, you'll be looking at spending about $80,000. Now, if you go to college, <laughs> which I'm not a big fan, and whether you take 61 or 141, obviously if you go to 141, it's gonna be more, but you're gonna be looking at spending anywhere from 120,000 to $200,000 or even more depending on what college you go to. Now, before I let you go, I do wanna give you a quick recommendation. It doesn't really have to do much with the topic of this video, but I just want you to know that whether, depending on which path you take, I don't recommend that you put money up front to any flight school. And the reason why I recommend that is uh, a flight school has a lot of risk because you have people flying. You never know if something ever happened. and then they get sued and then they file bankruptcy, then you won't ever see your money again. I've seen situations like that, not necessarily because uh, something happened to an airplane, but I don't recommend you do that. Always try to pay as you go. And that's what part 61 allows you to do, is you don't, most of them don't require you to put like 5,000 up front or anything like that. You can just pay as you go. And 141 you usually wanna see some money up front, that's fine, but just make sure it's not like $10,000 or $20,000 because you could lose that money. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed my video. If you guys liked it and you think it actually helped you, I would really appreciate a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.